It's Friday, November 18th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news, including surveillance video of a fight that broke out at a Sweet 16 party and led to the shooting of several people. Also, the Danbury mayor demanding an apology from Wilton students after they chanted build the wall at a recent football game, a car thief in New Canaan, and much more. Kevin Coleman joins us later with a Nutmeg Sports update, and Donald Ang will join us to take a look back on this day in history. But first, Bridgeport police have released a video from inside the Park Avenue Social Club, where five people were shot at a Sweet 16 party on Saturday night. Their surveillance video shows a fight breaking out on the dance floor and several shots fired. Later, as you're seeing here, it shows several young men coming and going through the club's doors, where the fight then breaks out again. The Bridgeport Police Detective Bureau is asking for assistance in identifying anyone pictured in this recording. If you have information, you can call them at 20 3-576-TIPS. And two men have been charged with murdering and disposing of the body of a Stanford man, Joseph Comunale, who was stabbed to death at a part after partying at a luxury Manhattan apartment that was being paid for by a celebrity jeweler. The New York Post reports that 25-year-old James Rackover, who lives in the East Side apartment where Joseph Comunale was killed, and 28-year-old Lawrence Dillon were charged early Friday with second-degree murder, concealment of a human corpse, tampering with evidence, and hindering prosecution. Each is being held on a three million dollar bond and their next court appearance is scheduled for Monday. And at least two Wilton High School students are said to have chanted build the wall during a football game against Danbury at Fujitani Field last Friday and the mayor of Danbury wants an apology. As reported by HAN's Wilton Bulletin, on Thursday Danbury Mayor Mark Bowen tweeted that the Danbury High School student body nor the city of Danbury had received an official apology from the students involved. Wilton Superintendent Kevin Smith apologized on behalf of the Wilton School community on Wednesday, but Bowen is seeking an apology from the students who chanted it. Bowen said a generic letter or some type of symbol of unity would be the right thing to do. In a November 17th letter to families, Wilton High School Principal Robert O'Donnell said an apology will be delivered to the high school, but did not say whether or not it would come from the students. O'Donnell said he spoke with the Danbury High School Principal Daniel Donovan earlier in the week to express that this act is not representative of their student body and the school, and they discussed mutual respect for the school. Superintendent Kevin Smith has also been in contact with Danbury Superintendent Sal Pascarella and Athletic Director Chris McDougall with Danbury High Athletic Director Chip Salvestrini. You can get a lot more on that story at WiltonBulletin.com. And in other news, a 36-year-old Plainville man is charged with trying to solicit sex from a preteen sex trafficking victim. Connecticut State Police detectives from the State Police Computer Crimes Unit initiated an undercover investigation related to underage sex trafficking. Through the course of that investigation, detectives learned that Charles Stone communicated via the Internet with undercover detectives in an attempt to meet with a preteen victim. Upon meeting with undercover state police, Stone was promptly taken into custody. He was also found to be in possession of a knife. He'll appear in court on November 28th. And New Canaan police are asking for help in identifying a suspect in a stolen vehicle case. Check out this photograph. Suspect 1 was photographed on October 11th around 11.30 in the morning in the Elm Street train station parking lot. According to police, the suspect vehicle stopped and suspect 1 exited from the passenger side. The suspect then walked to the victim's vehicle, a 2015 black Land Rover supercharger, entered the vehicle and drove it away. Anyone with information is asked to contact New Canaan police at 203-594-3519. And according to the Shelton Herald, the Board of Education in Shelton has implemented the qualifications needed to be met in order for a deceased student to receive either a posthumous honorary or regular diploma from Shelton High School at their most recent Wednesday night meeting. 
following the tragic deaths of SHS student Edmund Conklin in February of this year, there was a nationally observed lengthy process carried out by the city's Board of Ed to determine the details of a diploma that would be awarded to his family. The city's Board of Ed received lots of criticism from residents, classmates, and supporters of the Conklin family around the country for not immediately granting the family's wish to give Eddie's diploma at the graduation ceremony. In an effort to prevent similar issues from occurring, the board has passed a set of guidelines. In order to be eligible for a posthumous diploma, the student must have attended SHS and enrolled and be enrolled at the time of death. Honorary posthumous diplomas will be awarded at the Shelton High Evening Award Ceremony. Deceased students' names may be read as part of the roll call of graduates at the ceremony if the family desires it. A public issuance of the posthumous honorary diploma may be withheld as well at the superintendent's discretion. But there's a lot more on that story at sheltonherald.com. And in an update on a story we brought you yesterday, the Darien Times reports that the individual that caused a brief lock-in at Danbury High School yesterday was identified as a hunter who was authorized to hunt on the land where he was observed. At the time the call came in, the individual was walking back to his car, according to Police Sergeant Jeremiah Marin. Uh, he said there is no danger now, nor was there ever any danger. The high school did go into lock-in mode on Thursday morning around 845 after a report of a sighting of a man dressed in camouflage near the high school. But let's switch gears now. Take a look at the forecast. It's beautiful today. Sunny and clear. High of 61 degrees. Dropping down to a low of 41 degrees tonight. Still mild tomorrow with a high of 58. But it gets cold and windy on Sunday. High of 46 expected in the first part of the day Sunday. But it's going to get colder throughout. Low of 34 degrees. Uh, only a high of 42 expected Monday. However, no rain foreseeable over the next few days. So some good news there. But we are going to step out for a break and when we come back Donald Eng joins us to take a look back on this day in history. Kevin Coleman has a Nutmeg Sports update and we have more news after this. At Hoyt Livery our goal is to always... Sam what are you doing? We're filming a commercial. I'm checking out the new Hoyt on the Go app. Hoyt's, Hoyt's here. here! Hi this is Leo Carl from Carl Chevrolet in New Canaan and you've heard me talk about the Chevy Volt for years. The new model gets 53 miles on EV charge daily, plus 420 mile full range. But don't take my word for it. You need to come in and test drive the Volt yourself. Visit us at 261 Elm Street in New Canaan or online at carldirect.com. Have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The iPark Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. As you're getting back to your regular schedules, we're excited to get back to doing what we do best, offering you the freshest seasonal fare and all the ingredients for a healthy start to school. So shop Walter Stewart's for everything fresh, from A apples to Z zucchini, and from cotton candy grapes to back to nature all natural snack bags. We save you time by stocking all of your favorite back to school essentials under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. At Whip Blow Dry Bar and Salon of Ridgefield, it's all about creating a hassle-free, high-end experience for the entire family. Open seven days a week, the makeup and hairstyle salon on Governor Street has it all. From color services, men's haircuts with a complimentary microbrew, affordable kids' cuts, and more. And our blowout package includes a shampoo, scalp massage, blowout of your choice, and a lipstick application done by a celebrity makeup artist. Download the Whip Salon app to view the styles and book appointments. Get more information at whipsalon.com, 203-442-6. 444 or find Whip on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On time, done right, safe, and reliable. Mr. Handyman CT.com. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman CT.com. 
Discover a world of wellness in the heart of New Canaan. Halo Studios, New Canaan's first collaborative wellness center, offers you the freedom to choose from the best and latest health, fitness, and wellness options. Inside Halo Studios, you'll find all the wellness experts you need at places like Halo Fitness, Priority Wellness, and Sama Yoga Center. Come by for a free wellness assessment, open seven days a week at 45 Grove Street. For more information, visit halostudios.com or call 203-594-9909. We're back on this November 18th edition of Your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplensky, and it's time to throw it over to Donna Lang to take a look back in time on this day in history. Don. Well, Kate, we wish uh, an icon happy birthday today. Uh, not this first one, though. First, we go to 326. CE. The old St. Peter's Basilica is consecrated. Now, when you're talking about Vatican City, old is sort of a relative term. The current St. Peter's dates to 1626, 13 centuries later, also consecrated on this day, by the way. Uh, the current St. Peter's is the largest church in the world, not a cathedral, though, because the Bishop of the Archdiocese of Rome, we call him the Pope, uses St. John Lateran Archbasilica, which is about three and a half miles away. To 1883, Railroads institute the five standard continental time zones, ending the thousands of local times that had existed up to then. Now, it's hard to imagine today just how much power the railroads had in the 19th century, but they changed time. People had used solar time until then. When the sun's at its highest point in the sky, it's noon. But solar time changes by a second or so every few miles east or west. And when people traveled by horse 40 miles a day, it didn't matter. That noon in Boston was about two minutes before noon in New York, but with the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, long-distance trains traveled in both directions at high speed on a single track. At prearranged times and locations, eastbound trains will pull onto a side track to let westbound trains pass, and vice versa. Now, that one second every few miles matters a lot. Believe it or not, we have time zones, so the trains could run on time. 1978. Jonestown, Guyana. Jim Jones and the People's Temple have a, c carry out a mass murder suicide that claim 918 lives. That is a photo there of the uh, Flavor Aid packets laced with cyanide. The massacre had been prompted by the murder of Congressman Leo Ryan, who had come to investigate reports of the mistreatment of people at Jonestown. Finally, now we go to 1928, where we first saw, or rather we first heard this, uh, the release of the animated short Steamboat Willie. It was not the first appearance by Mickey and Minnie Mouse. It was actually their third, but it was the first cartoon to have fully synchronized sound and imagery. It today is considered by the Disney Corporation to be Mickey Mouse's birthday. That is your look back in history for today, November 18th, and I'm Donald Ng. All right, Don, thank you so much. Have a good weekend. That was a good one today. Thanks, you too. All right. Back to local news. In an important traffic note for the weekend, the exit 34 off-ramp of I-95 North will be closed from 8 p.m. Saturday to 10 a.m. Sunday. Traffic will be diverted to northbound exit 36 Plains Road back to Route 1. The closure and traffic detour are necessary, according to the DOT, for completing some paving and restriping of that exit area, as well as the deceleration ramp so definitely something to look out for but we're gonna throw it over to Kevin Coleman who's filling in again for Frank Cornito at the sports desk Kevin hey how's it going kid how good, are we doing good happy to have you back yeah happy to be here we have actually a big weekend ahead of us eight FCAC teams will be competing for a state championship on Saturday these teams will include for girls soccer the class double L final it's gonna be the number three Richfield Tigers taking on number one Glastonbury that game will be at Willowbrook Park in New Britain at 11 a.m. in the class L final again for girls soccer it's gonna be number three St. Joseph's taking on number five Massac. That game will be at Middletown. That game will be at 2 p.m. The boys soccer class double L final. It's going to be number 11 Danbury taking on number four Farmington. That game will be at Willowbrook Park in New Britain. That game is set for 2 p.m. We'll switch things over for field hockey now. Field hockey class L final. It's going to be number three Staples taking on number four Darien in an all FCAC final. That game is going to be at Weathersfield at 10 a.m. And in the Class M final for field hockey, number seven, New Canaan Rams taking on number four Guilford. 
That's at Weathersfield. That game will be at noon. And for volleyball, the Class Double L final, it's going to be, again, another all FCAC final. Number four, Richfield Tigers taking on number three, Stanford, at East Haven at 4 p.m. And the Southwest Connecticut Grizzlies will host the host Onondaga Community College Saturday at 3 p.m. at Kennedy Stadium for the Yankee Collegiate Conference Club Football Championship. The unbeaten Grizzlies will honor the members of the 2011 National Championship team. Many, the Grizzlies are a club program made up of students at Connecticut's community colleges, many of whom have played high school in the football area. And Kate, we have a big week coming up next week. We will be full coverage of the Turkey Bowl, which is set for Thursday. I know Monday we'll be in Darien, Tuesday we'll be at New Canaan. It's going to be a fun week leading up to the Turkey Bowl. Yeah, we have a lot of good stuff planned. And I have to say, Kevin, I'm loving the tie today. Oh, thank nice you. Nice choice. Thank All you. right. Thank well, you. thanks so much, <laughs> Kevin. We'll see you next week. Yes, have a good weekend. All right. Well, in other news today, a new Milford man was arrested for separate car burglaries in Darien and New Canaan on November 16th. At about 4 in the afternoon on November 16th, officers met with a 46-year-old Greenwich woman who explained that she had observed someone enter her car when it was parked at McGuane Field behind the Neroten Heights Fire Department. The woman uh, had a small child with her on the playground and her vehicle was parked nearby. She did not immediately contact police because she was unsure of what to do. However, she did end up taking a photo of the subject and took note of his license plate. The victim then came to police headquarters about 20 minutes later. The registered owner of that vehicle was identified as 45-year-old Scott Palmenta of New Milford. According to police, Palmenta has an extensive criminal history and officers positively identified him as the suspect by comparing the photo to the one the victim took. Darian officers then notified surrounding agencies of that incident and gave out Palmenta's vehicle description. At about 6 p.m., just two hours later, the New Canaan Police Department contacted Darian and advised that they had just taken Palmenta into custody for a similar incident that happened at Waveney Park. Park. You can get more on that story at DarianTimes.com. And three intersections account for most of the accidents in the town of Easton, according to the Easton Courier. Numbers from 2015 show that Reading Road and Westport Road, there were a total of 13 accidents in 2015. On Sport Hill Road and Center Road, there's been five. Black Rock Road and Westport Road, three accidents. And Stepney and Church Road, another three. As the numbers show, the four-way intersection at Route 136 and Reading Road has the most accident uh, accidents occur there. It is a particularly busy intersection for commuters trying to find less congested ways to reach out-of-town job destinations in the morning. You can get a lot more on that story at EastonCourier.com. And Ridgefield's newest restaurant, the Village Tavern by Germano Minnen, is set to open January 15th in the former Dog and Pony location at 378 Main Street. Bruno DeFabio, part owner of the business, confirmed the opening to the Ridgefield Press on Wednesday. He said it's going to be a modern American restaurant that offers a blend of new and old dishes inspired from cuisines around the world. Minnen, a 2014 winner on the Food Network reality TV series Chopped that DeFabio appeared on as a judge, as you can see in this photo will be moving to rich going to be a chef com we're going to step out for a break and when we come back we're going to recap some of the top area stories we're following today after this this is now 44 years i've been in this business digital came along after i was in business for about six years i had to totally reinvent the business so I had to make a tremendous investment in my business. And Milford Bank was there for me. I don't really make a bank. spin gives energy zone. Spin. There's a range of Let Manfredi New Canaan help you find the perfect gift to celebrate important life moments. Visit us at 72 Elm Street, New Canaan, or online at manfredijewels.com.
The leaves are changing, water temps dropping, and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. I'm Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. We're back on this Friday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network, recapping some of the top area stories today, including that Bridgeport police have released a video from inside the Park Avenue Social Club where five people were shot at a Sweet 16 party on Saturday night. Their surveillance video shows a fight breaking out on the dance floor and several shots fired. Later, as you're seeing here, it shows several young men coming and going through the club's doors where the fight breaks out again. The Bridgeport police are asking for assistance in identifying anyone pictured in that recording. If you know of anyone in it, you can call them at 203-576-8477. And two men were charged on Thursday with murdering and disposing of the body of Stanford man Joseph Camionale, who was stabbed to death after partying at a luxury Manhattan apartment that was being paid for by a celebrity jeweler. The New York Post reports that 25-year-old James Rackover, who lives in the east side apartment where Joseph Camionale was killed, and 28-year-old Lawrence Dillon were charged early Friday with second-degree murder, concealment of a human corpse, tampering with physical evidence, and hindering prosecution. Each is now being held on a $3 million bond, and their next court appearance is scheduled for Monday. And at least two Wilton High School students are said to have chanted Build the Wall during a football game uh, against Danbury at Fujitani Field last Friday, and the mayor of Danbury wants an apology. As reported by HAN's Wilton Bulletin, on Thursday, November 17th, Danbury Mayor Mark Bowton tweeted that the Danbury High School student body nor the city of Danbury had received an official apology from students involved. Wilton Superintendent Kevin Smith apologized on behalf of the Wilton School community on Wednesday, November 16th, but Bowton is seeking an apology from the students who chanted. Uh, Bowton said a generic letter or some type of symbol of unity would be the right thing to do. You can get a lot more on that story at thewiltonbulletin.com. Uh, Kendra Baker's done a great job covering that story thus far. Yes, uh, just one minute. Okay, and in other news, a 36-year-old Plainville man is charged with trying to solicit sex from a preteen sex trafficking victim. Connecticut State Police detectives from the State Police Computer Crimes Unit initiated an undercover investigation related to underage sex trafficking victims. Through the course of the investigation, detectives learned that Charles Stone communicated via the Internet with undercover detectives in an attempt to meet with a preteen victim for sex. Upon meeting with the undercover detective, Stone was promptly taken into custody. He was also found to be in possession of a knife. He'll appear in court on November 28th. And New Canaan police are asking for help in identifying a suspect in a stolen vehicle case. Check out this photograph. Suspect 1 was photographed on October 11th at about 11.30 in the morning in the Elm Street train station parking lot. According to police, the suspect vehicle stopped and the suspect exited the passenger side. He then walked to the victim's vehicle, a 2015 black Land Rover supercharger, entered the said vehicle and drove it away. Anyone with information is asked to contact the New Canaan Police Department in Investigative Division at 203-594-3519. Now uh, we have some breaking sports news, bringing Kevin Coleman back on. Kevin, can you tell us what's going on? We have some disappointing news for uh, Class Double L Boys Soccer Final. Uh, Danbury has been disqualified from the Class Double L Boys Soccer Tournament. Shelton will advance and play Farmington on Saturday. That is disappointing news per Scott Erickson. Uh, we will have more news later on, but that's breaking news right now that Danbury will not advance to the Boys Double L Soccer Final.
Wow. All right. I know that's a story we're going to be following. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. Uh, taking one final look at the forecast. Sunny with a high of 61 degrees today, dropping to 41 tonight. Uh, still mild tomorrow, high of 58 degrees, but it gets cold and windy Sunday. High of 46 in the morning, getting colder throughout the day, however, low of 34 degrees. Only a high of 42 degrees expected Monday. Uh, however, no rain in the foreseeable future, so that's one bright spot, but it will be getting colder uh, during the week next week, feeling a lot more like Thanksgiving. We're going to wrap things up here on your coffee break. We will be back Monday at 11, and we have a busy week of Turkey Bowl coverage. Uh, so have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.